The Ferrari still doesn't have an engine. Ooh. And this is the gear box. <laughs> but luckily, I have two gearboxes. One which came with the car, which is in a million pieces, and another I bought cheap from eBay, which has fire damage. And is also now in a million pieces. Oh my days. But today, we're gonna put it all back together, and hopefully, we can get it back in the car. If that's not unrealistic. So this is where things get a little bit hard. Like everything we've put on now was how we found the engine. So we've took it apart and we've put it back together. But everything from now on is stuff that we've not experienced before. And we're just going off diagrams. We're just trying to work out what goes in here and then the inlet manifold goes on it. But for now, I think let's just carry on building up what we can in this middle section here. In the last video, we managed to rebuild the full Ferrari engine without any experience with Ferrari engines before. We're on and we're timed up and it works. It actually spins, which left us at this point here. But there's still a lot of vital parts to go on. We've got the knock sensors, which sit in the middle of the engine and two oil coolers. And on top of that, a bracket, which holds a lot of things down. But we're just going off photos here and we're hoping we're right. I think the next step to go on, we can get all the ancillaries on because this engine sits the way it sits in the car now. So when you, all the ancillaries and the belt and everything is all at the front of the engine. So if we put the engine in and then try and put the ancillaries on, it's, you're just not gonna get to it because it's at the very front of the car rather than being at the back like the Mercer Lago. So I think next step is to try and fit alternator and everything like that. Let's try it. First thing is, ah! <laughs> oh, I kneeled on that. <laughs> Power steering pump, okay? We're gonna have to remove a bolt from the chain cover to hold the power steering pump in place. And I guess we're gonna learn these little things as we go along. Because we didn't take this engine apart, it is 10 times harder to put it back together. Once that bolt's in, there's two more bolts which hold it to the side of the engine. And that should hold it in place. Next thing, is the aircon condenser. Now this doesn't just simply bolt to the side of the engine. You have to have it, they have a shim and I'm pretty sure it's just an afterthought, but it looks like that, but we've had to make one um, because we're not buying one from Ferrari for probably like a tenner. The shim looks like this and it's actually only £1.48, but with a two to three week wait. And I'm not waiting that long for it. Right. Pull it. Power steering, aircon, alternator. The alternator sits in the middle of the V of the engine. This adjuster at the back, see that? Oh yeah. Moving the alternator so you can line the belt up properly. So we probably should put the belt on as well. Next up is the belt. Again, all we're using here is a photo for reference because the only workshop manual we have is for the Maserati engine, which is slightly different. But we've just about worked out how the auxiliary belt goes on. Then we've just got to make sure that the alternator is sitting nice and true with the belt. And that should just about do it. Tony Armstrong here, reporting live from Matt Armstrong's unit. Today we are rebuilding the Ferrari. Don't say my name because nobody knows it. Matt's dad here, reporting <laughs> live from Matt's unit. There's this pipe which sits here. I'm not sure what it does. Do you think it carries oil? It's oil, isn't it? But we are missing a pipe, surprise, surprise, which goes from here to here. And if we order it, it's probably going to be two to three weeks. But, 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 luckily we've just rebuilt an Audi RS6 and we have a lot of spare parts. This part was after, off the Audi RS6 and I think it can help us rebuild a Ferrari because it's wow. almost perfect. <laughs> so if we cut that down to size, we could use an RS6 hose on that. It absolutely works and it, it looks the same type of hose as this one. So. You watch that one blow up when we try and do like a gumball rally or something. <laughs> <laughs> My dad trimmed down the RS6 hose. Oh, OEM. And it was a perfect fit. Sometimes you have to improvise. 
It's either that or wait weeks for the new part and probably pay over the odds because of Ferrari prices. Next thing to go on is the inlet manifold. That doesn't look like it's supposed to go on that, does it? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> now this engine has port injection, which means the fuel injectors sit in the inlet manifold, meaning that the fuel is injected before the combustion chamber. So the air and fuel mixture is mixed before it goes into the combustion chamber as opposed to direct injection, which is injected directly into the combustion chamber. There's pros and cons to both of these methods, but for now, we're just worrying about the port injection because that's what we've got. My dad's applying some silicon grease to the seals on the injectors and then slotting them in place in the inlet manifold. And as the Ferrari has a V8, there's one injector for each cylinders, meaning there's eight injectors. So I'm doing the other side. Then I connect up all the electrical connectors to the injectors. Exciting times, it's time to take it off and we're on to the next step. One step closer to getting it in the car and starting it and hearing it for the first time ever. What are you talking about? Like <laughs> what we're trying to do now is hang this up so we can get to this side because now it's time for the clutch and the flywheel. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Whoa. Right, next up. Flywheel, these are super light and quite small, but the lighter it is, the higher and faster it's gonna rev. Not the higher, the faster it's gonna rev. And this has all been balanced because you can see all the little drilled holes here to make sure that it's nicely balanced. And we got this from Scuderia Parts, shout out to them as well. And they've even gave you guys a discount code. So if you need any Ferrari or Maserati parts, you can go grab them. And I've put a link in the description with the discount code, as I mentioned as well. So they're helping me out, they're helping you guys out as well, which is good. New flywheel bolts and washer goes in here. And then we've got to torque these up. The flywheel bolts have to be torqued up in like a star-shaped pattern to make sure it's evenly pressed onto the side of the engine. So this is a twin-plated clutch and it's got like a clutch plate here and another clutch plate there, I assume for, for smoother gear changes. We've got all new bolts for the clutch and we apply a little bit of Loctite to them. Okay, so there's a line. So we're assuming that that line would line up with that because that's what it's balanced to. Correct. Once we've lined the clutch up with the flywheel, we can bolt it all together and torque all the bolts up, of course. Oh, spot on. <laughs> it's looking pretty good now. And now we've got the clutch on and the flywheel. It's time for the gearbox. Or what's left of it. As I mentioned, we now have one gearbox which is in pieces and incomplete and one gearbox which was involved in a fire. Well, uh, there goes half a million dollars. And all the bearings or anything plastic inside have completely melted. But the thing is, we've got to make this work. We bought the Ferrari for £60,000 and we've already spent just short of £18,000 on it. For a second-hand gearbox, it's £15,000, which is just going to push the build budget way too high. And a manual 430 at the minute is selling for around £100,000. The thing is, if we can make this gearbox and engine work, we're on to a winner because it's actually a really clean example of a 430. When I checked it out on Car Vertical, I can literally see all green ticks. It's never been recorded as stolen. It's never had any mileage rollbacks. There's no outstanding finance on it. And it's never been recorded as being in an accident. And Car Vertical are putting an average price on this car at £126,000. I can even see here the mileage records and they all line up. Last record was 31,000 miles, which is about what it's done now. I suggest you use Car Vertical before you go and buy any car. Just check out this Maserati that I checked out here. It has an amber light showing that it's been involved in an accident. And if you scroll down, it actually shows you the photos of when the car was auctioned off at the Car Crash Auction website. So now you can see Car Vertical is a must before parting with any of your money. And to check your car, a friend's car, or a car you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below and use my code on screen now to save yourself a bit of discount on that check. Let's get this gearbox done. On my right hand side is the gearbox which I bought from eBay for £4,000 and on my left hand side 
is the gearbox that we got with the car or what's left of it. And this was stripped apart because there was something wrong with it. Now, <laughs> everything on this side is completely burnt to pieces and there's loads of little bearings which are just melted. And even if you look in the casing, it is fully black in there and there's loads of little bearings in there which have set on fire. So I think our plan is to use the original casing and trying to make one good gearbox out of two bad ones. Here we go. <laughs> now there's two shafts in a gearbox, but we'll get onto that later. Right now we're looking at the secondary shaft, which has came out of the fire damage gearbox, and this one, which is the one which came with the car. Now if you look at this one which came with the car, the gear at the end looks smooth and rounded, and we think it looks worn, but the bearing above it looks in pretty good shape. Whereas if you look at the fire damage one, the gears look nice and sharp. So we're gonna use that shaft, but take the bearing off the one that we got with the car and put it on the fire damage one, if that makes sense. And we're also in Dave DTB's workshop here, hence why there's a Noble in the background. I didn't just buy a Noble. We're nicking Dave's <laughs> bearing press. <laughs> Ferrari 430, how did you have one of them in here? <laughs> All the bearings have gotta be pressed onto the shaft. And we need a pretty strong bearing press, so thanks Dave. Once Dave had pressed it on with a special Ferrari tool, we can then start assembling the rest of the parts which go on the shaft. As my dad took apart the burnt gearbox, he knows how this shaft goes back together, almost using it as a reference. If one bearing wasn't enough, on goes another bearing. All the bearings we're using off the one that we got with the car because they look pretty good, if not new. Then to hold all that on, a bit of Loctite, and then a locking ring over the top, which we assume needs to be torqued up, to a top secret torque spec, which we're gonna have to blur out. Yeah. You've done the proper torque spec. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, now just a million more gears to go. After that, we can begin with putting gears on. The next gear to go on, we're gonna use from the fire damage gearbox. Just because we were missing that gear from the gearbox that we got with the car. But the rest of the gears we'll be using from the one we got with the car. As they all look good. Again, both of those gears have to be pressed onto the shaft. As they're gonna rotate with it. Right, so here's the shaft that we've just done. This is out of the burnt one, which has melted bearings in that's the secondary shaft which connects with that one like a bike this is the shaft out of the gearbox that we got with the car we've got to make this look like this and then put it into that housing over there <laughs> oh, if, if you've lost us Bear with. <laughs> now we're trying to avoid using anything from the burnt gearbox. So I'm looking at the gears that we got with the car to try and build up the primary shaft exactly the same as the one that came out the burnt gearbox. The primary shaft is the one that is spun by the engine, the top one in this diagram, and the secondary shaft is the one that sends the power to the wheels. And they're kind of interlinked together, but everything has to be spot on. And if something is one millimeter out, it can cause the whole gearbox not to work. Right now, my dad's building up the primary shaft, the one that is constantly spinning with the engine, as I mentioned. And we're just using the burnt gearbox primary shaft as a reference of how this thing goes back together. And at the minute, it's looking pretty good as it seems we have all the gears and all the parts to make this shaft complete. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's made up of so many bearings, shims and spacers. It is unreal. Such a complex job. Right, this shaft is completed, we think, and everything is the right way. Now we're gonna put it inside the box. So this is the casing from the one that we got with the car. So this is a selector fork, and this is how you select the gears. So it'll, it'll slide into gear, lock that gear into place. I don't exactly know how this works, like, I don't think anyone does really. No, I mean, I don't. no one does. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're trying. At least we're giving it a go. And if it don't work, we've learned. And then we'll keep doing it until it does work. So Inside the box, there's more bearings and a spacer as well. We're just hoping that this all works. This is how they did it at Ferrari. <laughs> Both shafts go in together, interlinked. There you go then. 
And then they needed a little bit of persuasion to just knock it into place. Which I did gracefully. Insert! 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 Oh, <laughs> uh, you just got... Ferrari! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Once the two shafts are resting in the gearbox, we can continue to build them up with even more gears. And the selector forks as well. And we know we're doing it right at the minute because we can see all the selector forks are all lining up. These forks slide forward and backwards to lock the car in gear or back out of gear. You can see how it works here, but it's still pretty complex. That's promising. <laughs> My dad removed the gearbox filter and it was absolutely caked up. <laughs> we still don't know the real reason why the original gearbox was taken apart. But judging by all that metal on the filter, it didn't look good. But everything that's gone back into the box now looks in good condition. And the final touches were done by Dave. It just needs that on there. <laughs> Certified. <laughs> and just when you thought it was done, there's one more gear. The reverse gear. Figure out which way around this went on. Yeah, I can have a look. I can outside. have a look. Show, show me the groove. <laughs> There's the groove. <laughs> oh yeah, that is the groove. Right. No groove on the outside, so this groove is going on the inside. And if you haven't watched part two, go watch that before you carry on watching this video. Yeah, it's <laughs> in the top right hand corner. And then oh. here it is. Here it is. Goes in there, like that. Wow, look at that. It's not fitted properly yet, but yeah, that's, but that's how, how it works. works. Reverse gear, and it reverses the whole thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> we still we don't really know how it works, but we're at least we're trying to learn. Because you're using another gear, it spins the shaft the other, the other way. Oh. Yeah. How did we not know this from the start? <laughs> Whatever this gearbox ain't got in now, it ain't never having in. <laughs> I'm gonna dab on the haters. <laughs> We're now onto the final pieces of the gearbox. After we spent such a long time working out how this thing went back together, and if it actually works, what an achievement it is. So not only rebuild the engine, but also the gearbox. But it's not only the engine and gearbox we've got to rebuild, there's something else. Supposedly, the gearbox is now all in one piece. But the thing is with this gearbox, it's also a differential as well. So to actually drive the wheels, the gearbox will go in gear and then it will spin the wheels here and we don't have any, and I've just noticed, look, it, something got caught here. Ooh. So we need the differential. And if we come over here, we have one burnt differential and one differential in a lot of pieces. So next job, I'm gonna take this apart and rebuild this. I think there's new bearings and everything on this, but there's parts we're missing off this. So I think, again, it's a case of our two bad ones make one good one, and we can whack it in. My dad's gone, so this one is down to me. Let's do it. Also, forgot to mention, uh, these gears here, I think it's the pinion, maybe. So these are gonna meet up with the teeth inside there so we're making sure we've used the these are the teeth from the burnt gearbox and these are the teeth out of the burnt gearbox so those two are going to meet so i don't want to mix and match the actual teeth because they've probably been gapped to the right size or that type of stuff as well we don't actually have any on the um one that we got in bits so at least we're going to keep these two together so they know each other <laughs> Let's do it. This is one burnt differential, which is complete. And this is one incomplete, non-burnt differential. And it's the secondary shaft here, which is gonna spin the differential. So right now I'm taking apart the burnt differential and I'm gonna use all the bearings and all the good parts out of the good differential to build it back up again. Right, <laughs> from taking one apart, I'm now about to put this one back together. I have no idea what these do or what they're supposed to do. So that is that, that way, way around, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah okay. So this is like a, it looks like a clutch plate inside the diff. 
that goes in there. Do you reckon it's meant to go in a certain way? I did think about that earlier, but I think these are evenly spaced. So I think yeah, right. so there's no... Okay, so that's in. There's going to be a lot of people that go, Oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. But you shouldn't laugh at someone for trying, because we're trying. And if it doesn't work, it's okay because it's my car. And if I break it, it's only my problem. So don't worry. Everyone that says I can't do it, I'm giving it a try. Okay? Here we go. Trying. <laughs> Now I'm knocking on the burnt gear onto the good diff. And it all lines up pretty good. We're gonna add some Loctite to the bolts. And again, we have no way of finding the torque specs for this diff. We barely found them for the engine. So we're just gonna make sure that they're all torqued up evenly. It's the best we can do. Is it a recipe for disaster? Well, I guess we find out when we finally start the car and try to drive it. Next thing is the big outer bearing. I've got to knock this on with a piece of wood because Dave's closed his workshop and we can't seal his bearing press anymore. But the piece of wood did it. After that, it's the outer casing and these all have fresh bearings in as well. So it's looking good for us at this stage. We have to push this over the top and then the shims, more roller bearings. These are the roller bearings out of the burnt gearbox. So I'm gonna swap these over to the non-burnt gearbox and pop them in, more shims, and then it is all held in with a C-clip. But we had a small problem on trying to get this C-clip into place. It was pretty difficult. We're struggling now. This casing here has to go on there like that. Then, this C-clip here has to go on top like that and hold it all in place. But we cannot get it pressured down far enough. So we're gonna try a different technique and actually start putting the diff inside the gearbox. Now, the way this is gonna work is the engine spins that and that rotates to turn the wheels, which to turn the wheels spins this pinion round here like that, and the whole thing turns the wheels and you get power sent to the wheels. The thing is, supposedly, this gearbox is in neutral. And uh, if it were in neutral, when we spin this, because this is gonna be constantly spinning because the engine's on it, I don't think that should be spinning. And it's meant to be in neutral, but it's not. I don't think it is, so we could have got something seriously wrong here. The only thing I could think is if we put this diff in, bolt it together, then spin it, and then if we, if we start seeing the, the wheels turning, we've definitely done something wrong because it shouldn't spin. But let, let's see, let's see, because this could be a game changer now. That's fully in now, I've seen yeah. it just sink in. Right. Ah! Oh, it's not turning it. It's not turning it now. So do you think it just needed a bit of pressure, like a bit of resistance? Well, the only way to find out now is if we put this casing on, yeah, then knock it into gear, and then we can see whether it spins. Turns. <laughs> no one's going to... If you get what's going on, well done to you if you made it this far, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we were so close to finding out whether this gearbox was built properly, and whether it all works we should be able to spin the primary shaft without the wheels spinning whilst it's in neutral. The thing I have noticed, Matt, yeah. is it is still spinning. We'll see, we'll see, let's see if this goes in. Right, so it's little spacer. Then, um, big boy. Yep. And now, the moment of truth. This is just not ideal. Right, I'm gonna persuade it. It's nearly on with this screwdriver. Here we go. Boom. What? On. But it's still spinning. So, I, yeah, but I, I still, I, what I'm gonna do is put, I'm gonna put it on how it should. Yeah. Right, right, put the bolts in. Let's tighten this up. I'm not feeling positive though. You think it's still gonna spin? Right. I'm not looking forward to holding that and turning it and seeing if it doesn't work because this has literally took days to get to this point. <laughs> like that. 
Right, okay. When I'm spinning this shaft here, right? Oh no. That's neutral. Is that a hundred percent in neutral? Wait, it's working. It's working. Oh it's working. My. Wait, let me hold this end. Oh. No, it's not working. No, it's not. Something is wrong. It's got to be stuck in gear. Imagine if it were, if it was in neutral and you're pushing the car forward, it shouldn't turn this because that'll be turning the engine over. And look, I turn the wheels forward and it is, no. it's turning the engine over. So it's stuck in gear. All those selectors are all in the middle, nice and free. Right, that's in gear. Yeah, I can't even turn that round. Like the gear's so hard. We might have put a wrong spacer in, spaced out slightly wrong, and it's just catching it. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. If you don't, please don't comment. You're with me. <laughs> Wait, full on plot twist. We think it works. Well, it does work. There's a thing called gearbox drag, which obviously there's no oil in the gearbox and that's gonna cause it to drag a bit in neutral, but check this out. We can actually get it to turn. Hannah's gonna hold it, hold the drive shafts in place, and I'm just gonna spin round the engine. Here we go. Yes, look at that. It's spinning and it's working. There's a lot of drag, oh but again, <laughs> there's no oil in there. It works. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. What, what's up with that one? Why has it got stuff missing? Because it's not completed. That's correct. <laughs> like a truck there, I just can't deny giving me the best time.